my friends, we're going to integrate e to the negative ax squared from zero to infinity. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do this using polar coordinates. It's going to be very, very quick and dirty. If you want a longer detailed version of this, you can check out my video on that. Uh, but anyways, here we are. So we'll set the integral equal to i, and then we'll rewrite this integral in terms of y instead of x. That doesn't change anything. It's just changing the variable. Now we'll multiply these two equations together. The left-hand side becomes i squared. And the right-hand side, side becomes these two multiplied together. And with a little bit of rearrangement, this is what we've got right here. Now we're going to invoke an exponent law where we can add the exponents because we're multiplying the bases. Do you see that? Now, at this point, we're going to convert into polar coordinates. And I won't go in detail on how to do that. But essentially, x and y go from 0 to infinity, right? So in polar coordinates, r is going to go from 0 to infinity because we're in this first quadrant here. And theta has to go from 0 to pi over 2, which is, which is 90 degrees. To get r in terms of x and y, we use the Pythagorean theorem. r squared equals x squared plus y squared. And dx dy in terms of polar coordinates is uh, r dr d theta. And then r goes from 0 to infinity, and theta goes from 0 to pi over 2. And if we substitute that all in, this is what we got here. So we're integrating d theta, or integrating, yeah, d theta from 0 to pi over 2. And we're integrating e to the negative a r squared from 0 to infinity, uh, r dr is right here. Okay, yeah, uh, this, if you need to know this in detail, I have a, a detailed video on this, but I, I just didn't want to explain this too much, just kind of keep it short. So the integral of this right-hand side is going to be done using a u substitution. We'll set u equal to a r squared, and then if we take the derivative, du over dr equals 2 a r, and if we substitute that in, uh, you know, this is what we get. So we didn't touch the left-hand integral, uh, but the right-hand integral, we're now integrating e to the negative u rather than a r squared because of our substitution. And r dr, if we rearrange this equation, multiply both sides by dr, divide by 2a, we get r dr equals du over 2a, which we have right in here. Now, at this point, you know, we can integrate. So the integral of d theta is theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. So that's what we have here. And on this right integral here, we have this 1 half a gets yanked out. The integral of e to the negative u is e to the negative u. It's itself with a negative sign. So this is the negative sign yanked out. And we're evaluating it in the limits as u goes from from zero to infinity right here. We'll just set the limit up with a different variable. And this limit term becomes zero, so that's pretty sweet. The right term becomes one. And if we simplify this whole thing, we get this negative cancels out with this negative. Two times two is four, and then the a is here. So to solve for i, we take the square root and we get plus or minus, unfortunately, this plus or minus, one half root pi over two. Uh, but this plus or minus is not much of a bother because this function is always above the horizontal axis, right? So we have to accept the positive side, the positive only. We, have to, we reject the negative since the area under the curve is always going to be positive. And at this point, this is our integral in all its glory and we're done. You know, I got tons and tons of other videos. Check those out. They're not easy to learn. Integrals are not easy to learn in general, but the more you do, the better you'll get. Uh, hang in there. You can survive.